<laughs> all right i'm sorry That's to interrupt the party but um assalamu alaikum everyone and um welcome to our third session of inspired by faith and science supported by british science association and uk research and innovation mashallah today uh, we have a very special session it's all in relation to acoustics which is all to do with sound and I'm not going to bother to say any, um, anything in relation to that because we have an expert with us today, our special guest, Asina Begum. Um, I've, had a sneak, I've had a sneak peek at the, the presentation that she's created. Inshallah, I know it's going to be, it's going to be an awesome session. Um, but before we hand the session over to our guest, um, can I, like usual, request our Ustad, Ustad Munim to maybe share a few words? Uh, give us a maybe an insight perspective perspective on acoustic or sounds. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum guys, how's everyone? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so uh, when uh, I first heard that we we're gonna have a, a session on acoustics, uh, it brought back to mind a hadith which I, um, which we learned about and I found it so interesting. Uh, so the hadith is from the Mu'ta of Imam Malik. So Imam Malik is, a, is one of the famous Imams. And in the hadith, it's quite interesting because uh, it's mentioned about the Prophet Sallallahu when he would talk, when he would speak, he never used to really talk in a raised voice. But even amongst the gathering, it was it was such that the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu was always heard by people. Uh, at the hadith, it, the reason why I found it really interesting and the reason why I remember it even till today uh, was there was a time in Medina where the Prophet Sallallahu he was with some Sahaba, um, and it was the day of Friday, so it's Juma, and they had gathered together, and the Sahaba that were with him, they were stood up, and he told them to sit down. So he said, sit down, and when he said that, there was a Sahaba who was sort of a distance away, and when he heard that, he sat down straight away. Now, he was, he was quite a far distance away, but the sound of the Prophet's voice actually reached him, and he sat down. And then again, this is just out of the love and obedience that they had to Rasulullah. Now, when some other Sahaba uh, followed and sort of came behind him and saw him sat down, they asked him, you know, why, why are you sat here? And he said that, oh, because I heard the voice of the Prophet telling me to sit down. They actually sat down there and then. Now, the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, keeping to the, the topic of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when. Um, when they would do imamat, so when they would have a big congregation, when they would pray salah, they would have someone called a mukabbir. Does anyone know what the job of a mukabbir is? Anyone, guys? You can unmute your mic and say if you if you can have a guess. Anyone? He's like a echo. He's like a say, say that again, please, Sabir. And like he he sees what the person said. Is Very good. Okay. Very good, mashallah. So I don't know if you guys have ever watched um, live recitation of the Quran in Makkah, where you realize that when the Imam, when he goes down to Ruku, when he stands up from Ruku, when he goes down to Sajda, when he says Allahu Akbar, you hear someone else say it as well. And the reason for that was so that the travel, that, that the sound would travel uh, through the uh, through the rows, through the surfs, because they're obviously all facing forward and. There were times, there's been times in Muslim history where the congregation has been so large, it's been so big that they've had to have several mukabbiris, one after another, actually, you know, saying the takbir one after another to the point where you can imagine if the imam's gone into ruku and the mukabbir gives his uh, takbir, says Allah Akbar, they follow, they follow. And it goes all the way back to the point where, believe it or not, there's times where um, the Imam, for example, he's in his second rakat, and the people right at the back are still, for example, in their first sajda, because the, 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 because because of the way it's sort of, you know, again, we've got an expert here, so I don't want to embarrass myself by talking about how sound travels through the air, but it's almost like the same way that sound travels, that this sort of, the salah is traveling, that the ruku is traveling through the through the surfs, and even till today, they actually still have the mukabbir in uh, in in Makkah, even though they don't need it because now they've got speakers. Uh, I think today I, mean, I looked at uh, uh, one of the the posts that Bisop sent me of the Hasina put together about the acoustics and how the domes and how the um, uh, mihrab and the minarets work, and it's absolutely amazing. And I'm again, I'm really looking forward to learning more about it. Inshallah. With that, Inshallah, back to you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Ustad. 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 Th
MashaAllah, yeah, there's so many wonderful things that you mentioned there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Hasina's presentation will be picking up on, on, on those things. Uh, before we go to Hasina, um, if I can request um, my favorite youth worker again, Hafiz the D1, to introduce yourself and maybe introduce some of our particip participants as well. Okay, Asalaamu Alaikum, guys. My name is D1, uh, your brother. I told you the oldest participant uh, here. Uh, trying to learn, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we've got a great asset in our community, Hasina. Um, not only is she a scientist, she's a Muslim as well, which is, makes it a great combo. Um, what I'll do is I'll introduce the participants. We play a little game, okay? In school, I'm not sure if you played before, it's called You're Fired. I'm sure ba Basel's played when I was in school. So how it works, I'm going to ask a question. So fang fastest finger first, so get ready to type. I'm going to ask a question. Let's see who's, be who's been listening to the past two um, seminars that we've had with the speakers. Okay, so get ready to type. When you answer the question right, you get to kick someone out, not out of the call, out of the um, uh, game, and then the last person standing uh, wins. So I'm going to do it quickly. We'll do it within two minutes because I know uh, we've got a speaker and limited time. Uh, and then you can maybe introduce yourself when you answer the question right. So we start off easy one. Are you ready? Okay. Get it. Wait, someone's here. Ready. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm going to start. Name me any food that was mentioned by Alia. That's mentioned in the Quran. Oh, that was fast. Day. Someone's got a fig. Someone said fig. Muhammad Umar Hamza. Who would you like to fire? You can unmute yourself, kick someone out, fire someone. Remember, if you get fired, don't be upset. If I got fired, I'd, I'd think, wow, the guy finds me a threat, finds me he's worried that I'd win. So go on, uh, fire someone, Umar, quickly. Um, quickly, quickly, quickly. Jahid Ahmed. Oh, Jahid Ahmed. That's <laughs> time. Right, next question is going to get harder. Um, name me one of the speakers that spoke yesterday. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Well done, Ismail and Amira. Ismail and Amira. Don't fire yourself. Fire, fire, fire someone. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Kick someone out. Remember, Jahid, you're out. Who is it? Zara. Yeah. Yeah, that's tight. Zara, you're out. Now, now you can fire three people. You can fire three people. A harder question. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. When was the son born, approximately? When was the son born, approximately? When was the son born? Ooh, Omar, you're missing a zero. You're missing a zero. Yeah, Omar. Omar's got it. Omar's got it. Omar, do you want to say the answer out loud? Omar? I don't really know the answer. I just wrote loads of zeros. Oh, then you lose. Yeah, uh, who's got it right? Three, six. Musa. Musa. Musa Asif. Musa. Musa Asif. You got it right. Yeah, right. What was the answer? Uh, you were just bashing the zeros, were you? Yeah. Okay, you're wrong then. It's uh, well done to Sahel. Sahel, fire three people. I'd fire those two that just bash the zeros. Well, um, so the answer was five billion years. So I'll obviously, Omar. Omar, Omar, Omar. Yeah. Yep. Um, second person, obviously, is oh, Hassan. 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 And then? And third um, person is. Um, uh, Guys, if you can just excuse me for a second. Um, so, hell, did you say five million or five billion? The B. He's putting the chat. Yeah, billion, billion. Oh, sorry, billion. I do apologize. I do apologize. So, um, and um, um, Basel and Salah. Yeah, Bas. You could only find one of them. So Salah's out. Basel's in. Actually, no, yeah, right. Basel, then, yeah. you know that they're going to both help each other. Basel and Salah, both of you are. Sorry, boys. Um, now you can kick out. Who's I think there's about seven left. If I have five people, five people. Um, let me give you a hard one. Name me one of the foods. I'm going to give you the description. What is this food? Okay, you've got to get the spelling right as well. It's a green skinned vegetable with white to translucent flesh and a bitter taste. Um, rich in antioxidants, especially vitamin C. No, no, oh, mashallah, Ismail and Al uh, Amira. Well done. Do you want to say the answer out loud? Our Mor Mor Moroccans. No, no, I, stopped, I, got, I got it wrong again. It's Algerians. Mohammed Nabil got it first. Those are boys. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Nabil got it first. Nabil, well done. Nabil, that's very honest of you. You can't fire Ismail and Amira now, Nabil. Nabil? Is Nabil there? There's Nabil? Yeah. Tell me. Five, five people quickly, quickly. Once again, I'm gonna fire you. Uh, Sabir. Okay, Sabir, bye. 
Fals. Sahil. Sahil. Ya. Um, Musa. Musa. Quickly. Uh, I think there's a um, Hamza and Adil. Adil. I think Rania, Nabil, Ismail, and Amir are left. If I'm correct, three people left. Okay, now, uh, now on me, uh, uh, or so, Sumaya and Shohana and Tahir. Yeah, you can uh, unmute yourself now. Now you can shout answer. Now you're a shout answer. You don't need to type. Shout um, I'm going to describe a food in the Quran. Please say so. It's got uh, 8.8 .8 grams of protein, 5.1 grams of fiber, 0 0.7 grams of fat, 100 grams, 100 grams. Okay, contains potassium, iron, vitamin B1. Uh, let me give you a bit more easier one. Um, and Is it great? No, no. We, we make dial out of it. Make dial out of it. Lentils. 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 Yeah, yeah Rania got that. For, Rania, I think, think he said Somaya helped Rania. So Somaya and Rania, you could kick out three people quickly. Any three? Um, you pick. Uh, who's in? I think uh, Suhana Somaya. I'd kick them out. They're they they're ruthless. They're they're very good. Okay, okay, we'll kick them out. Um, uh, Ismail and Mira. Uh, Ismail and Amira. Right, last question. I don't know who's it, but last question for the, whoever's left. Last question, uh, and I'm gonna give the question over to Hasina to st start off um her presentation. She can give the question, and then inshallah she can go ahead. Any questions, Hasina? Could be anything really. It can be related to your topic as well. Bismillah. Over to you. Hasina. Okay. Uh, Bismillah. Does anyone know what acoustics is or what it's related to? Is it sound? Well done, Mohammed. That's a uh, Umar. My Umar from um yeah, it's it's Salik's son, right? Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think Nabil, oh. Nabil answered it right. Nabil, well done. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I I just recognised um a student. I used to I used to tutor. It's very nice to see. I thought I recognised you. <laughs> Um, well done, Nabil. It is it's to do with sound? Uh, yeah. So does that mean I'm going to start? Yes, um, Asina, um, it's all yours. And um, if I can just ask you know, from all our young participants, how many of you? Um, well, you, you can either put your mic on and say that, or put your hands up. How many of you know Hasina? Okay. No one. I'm sure. No, there is. Um, no, there's this. Um, Shohana and Samaya, uh, Muhammad as well. Did she come on the science was... project before? Yes, she did. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. So there is quite a few people that that know you have seen. I'm on, I'm on, okay. on that note, the session is all yours. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Baisab. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum. It's really nice to see everyone here uh, and thank you to Atao Baisab for um, inviting me and asking me to uh, put something together to showcase some of the things that I do at, um, at university and as part of my PhD project. So um, what I'll be doing today is I'll be presenting something on acoustics and Islam. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'll just I'll just share my screen um, so you can all see the presentation that I've prepared. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So um, yeah, so I'll be uh, doing a small presentation on um, acoustics and Islam. And um, what I'll do is, um, I'll just show you the agenda for today. So um, the agenda of what I'm going to be talking about is, um, I'll just give a brief introduction into what I do and um, how I got to the stage that I am at now. Um, I'll talk about what is acoustics, and some of you already know it's to do with sound. Then we'll talk about some examples of acoustics in everyday life. And then we'll talk about how this relates to Islam. 
Um, then you'll get a debrief into the project. So um, yeah, I'll tell you about what we're going to do for uh, August. And then you'll get a small uh, masterclass into acoustics. I'll try and keep it fun and exciting because I don't want you to get bored. <laughs> and then I'll, we'll talk about some building insulation. Um, and then we can discuss ideas for the project, the end goal and what we're trying to achieve out of this. And then we can have some questions at the end. Is everyone okay? You can, um, you can raise your hand and then I'll ask you to unmute your mic and you can ask any questions if you, if you want throughout the session. That's fine with me. Is that okay? You can say yes in the chat box. <laughs> yep. Um, right, okay. Yeah, I think everyone's saying yes, good. So um, I was born and bred in Rochdale. Um, so I'm a local girl and I I think I don't, I don't see many of you around, but um, I definitely know this area really well. Um, See if this works. Hopefully, no. Okay, so um, I did my undergraduate degree at Manchester Metropolitan. So I did it in in chemistry. Do any of you guys like science? No. Science, yeah. yeah, I enjoy science. Oh, that's good. Uh, Why you like for Sahil? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I enjoy science. Chill out, my son. You don't enjoy science. You hate science. Don't chat science. You just hate science. You hate science, Hassan. Today, remember. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I really enjoy science. Um, you know, I think it's really interesting, and I always have lots of questions. Um, and I think that's the great thing about science because it, there's no limit to it. It's it's endless. You know. Um, so yeah, I did my bachelor's at um, Manchester Metropolitan. Then I worked for two companies in between. Um, so one was something. Uh, was a place called Sun Chemical. It was all to do with inks and packaging. And it was something to do with polymers. So I don't know if you guys know what polymers are. Does anyone know? Nope. <laughs> it's okay if you don't know. Is it plastic? Um, so one of the applications is plastics. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so polymers is, um, it's like this. So you, you start off with something called a monomer and you combine these monomers together and they produce this really long chain called a polymer and polymers um, can be really versatile and you can use them for different applications like plastics and coatings. Um, yeah, and the great thing about them is you can change them because they're really long, you can change them for different applications. So they're quite good like that. So I have a really big interest in polymers. Um, so that was the first company. Then I worked for a different company, which again needs to do with polymers. I even did my final year project in like wastewater and polymers. So uh, that was quite cool. I was looking at water treatments using polymers um, to take out like a certain waste that was that was within the water. Um, and then I started my PhD. Does anyone know what a PhD is? Nope. Is that extra course? Like a special degree in university. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's a special degree and not everyone does it. Um, and it's the highest qualification. So after that, you can't do any other degree after that. Um, and basically, I'm trying to study further to become um, a qualified scientist now, and then I'll, I'll get a doctor title at the end of it. So I'll finish that in December now, uh, which I'm really excited about. It's been really long. And then, um, so during my PhD, I'm, I'm sponsored by um, a research council and a company which uh, look at acoustics. And um, what I do is I make something called silica aerogels, which are used for acoustic applications so we make buildings and pipes quieter um, does anyone know what an aerogel is nope. <laughs> yeah is it, is it the lightest uh, solid yeah well done is was that someone called yahia yeah ah yeah. oh, brilliant yeah, yeah yeah so it's the lightest solid uh, known to man and maybe after this session you can google it and look at it on youtube but it's really cool it looks invisible and you can hold it in your hand. And if you was to put a naked flame against it, your hand wouldn't burn. Obviously, obviously don't, don't try this at home. Um, but um, some of the really good properties about it is that, you know, they have really good thermal conductivity and uh, really good acoustic, they're good for acoustic application, putting it into buildings and making them quieter. And then I also was very lucky to go and do international work with companies in Italy and Switzerland. And then 
there's a few networks that I'm also part of, again, to do with acoustics and to do with polymers. Okay, so that's enough about me. We're going to move on to um, what acoustics actually is. And some of you have already said it's something to do with sound. Um, so does anyone know what applications we can use acoustics in? You can shout it out. Any applications? Like what, what, what have you used acoustics in? Like any sound? Do you want to help me here? <laughs> Is it like soundproof that you put in the walls? Yeah, so you can use it for soundproofing. How yeah, about I don't understand sound? the question. You don't yeah. understand the question? So um, where have you seen acoustics being used? So where have you seen sound waves being used? A megaphone. Yeah. In a lab. In a river. In a river? What do you mean river? Um, the ripples of the river. Uh, yeah, so that's actually the vibrations, yeah? <laughs> Good. Um, what else? Anyone else? No? Sharon has <laughs> the same uh, pipes in the chat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anything else? Anything else you can think of acoustic? The most obvi obvious one, where is sound used in that people? So Jared said uh, megaphones in the chat. Yeah, megaphones. What about like a certain, what about like? Speakers. Yeah, speakers, microphones, instruments. Yeah. So well done. It's used in uh, music, uh, speakers, speech, uh, when we hear things, underwater acoustics. So do you know when, when whales talk to each other? I don't know if you've ever seen videos on it, um, but that's all acoustics, medical acoustics, and then obviously there's noise as well. Um, so I'm going to show you a video now, and I hope that you'll be able to hear the sound on it, but this will give you more of an idea as to uh, some of the things that acoustics is um, used in. Can you hear it? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Yep. Good. some rock music. So you can see there were lots of examples in where acoustics is used. Um, so it wasn't just the ones that we mentioned. You know, there's uh, it's used in infrastructure and and all sorts of things. Okay, so now we're going to move on to acoustics and Islam. Um, so what I know it's written there, but does anyone know the the surah? Um, yes, I know it. Everyone know that. Does anyone know all of it? Yes. 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 Can someone kindly recite it? One Jahid, do you have to understand? All right. Well, shall I read all of it? Yes, please. Is that okay? We all have to recite it at the end. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم 
عَلَّمَ الْإِنْسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانَ يَتَغَى أَنْ رَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى إِنَّ إِلَى رَبِّكَ رُجْعَى أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يَنْحَى عَبْدًا إِذَا صَلَّى أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ عَلَى الْهُدَى أَوْ أَمَرَ بِالتَّقْوَى أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى أَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى كلا لئن لم ينته لنسعا بالناصية ناصية كاذبة خاطية فلندعو نادية سندعو الزبانية كلا لا تتعه واسجد وقطارب واو ما شاء الله 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 ما شاء it only felt right to recite the whole surah because that was the first surah that was revealed, right? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> um, so already you can see that acoustics is quite an ancient discipline and it's been around for a really long time. And there are lots of examples where it's used in Islam. Um, so does anyone know, uh, can anyone give me any examples of where acoustics might be used in Islam? Revelation uh, when, between Jibreel and the Prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you uh, the Imam is um, reciting the surah and the people. Yeah. Well done. Anyone else? The Muazzin. Yeah. Brilliant. Anything else? In Dekka. Yeah. Perfect. Anyone else? No. Do you look around? What? Yeah. Exactly. So there's lots of different aspects in which acoustics is used in Islam, right? And you were all right, well done. Um, so when we have our testimony of faith, the shahada, when we're reciting the Quran, it's used in our speech, when we're praying, when we do dhikr, when we have the call to prayer, even the weekly Friday sermon, the khutbah, okay? Um, sorry, it's a bit slow, guys. Um, I don't know where it is <laughs> okay right so um so now i'm gonna um show you an audio or you're going to listen to an audio and i want you to tell me some different things that you can hear in the audio okay Okay, so that was actually a recording that I took when I was in Medina um, just before COVID. So it was in February 2020. Um, so there are at least three things in there where um, that you could hear. What could you hear in that audio? Anyone? The people in the back. Yes, so the people in the back and then you could hear the other one. There was one more thing that was... Echo. Echo. Okay, four more. Okay, four things then. What another one? Um, Did you hear nature. Nature, yeah, like birds tweeting, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, so already in that small clip, and it was only thirty seconds long, you could hear four different things that were related to acoustics, um, and it just shows how important acoustics is, and how we should. Um, well, I hope after this presentation you'll be more aware of what's around you and how important acoustics is. Okay, um, I think now we're gonna go into the debrief of the project. Does anyone recognize this picture? This picture? Jalalia. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, brilliant. So I've actually never had the opportunity to go inside. So I always have to rely on pictures on the internet, um, but it looks very beautiful inside. Um, but, so um, we're gonna talk about the debrief of the project. Um, and then I'll we'll quickly go through some acoustics. So what I would like you all to do um, over the summer, if you if you choose to do my project, is um, the aim would be to design a mosque. So just a small miniature, uh, I don't know, some kind of building um, using cardboard. And this is where you get really creative with your engineering skills. And you have to make it acoustically pleasing. 
Now, does anyone know what, what I mean when I say acoustically pleasing? It refers to uh, using ac uh, acoustics. Yeah, Somehow. definitely. Yeah, perfect, right? You guys are so clever, mashallah. So um, yeah, it refers to, um, well, obviously acoustics, um, but what we're gonna do is you have to create a building that's loud enough for the adhan to be projected um, so that Muslims can hear it and go to, to prayer. But it has to, it, you have to make sure that it's not too loud, that there's a, there's a difficulty in the neighborhood, right? Because even though the adhan is very beautiful, um, we don't want to disturb people and we don't want to annoy them, okay? So you're literally going to um, do a small scale engineering project. Um, so what you'll do is you'll create the building and you can use any kind of material. So cardboard, polystyrene, foil, sp a sponge. I think um, Atawa Bicep has, has a nice kit for you all to use. I don't know if you've all received it. Maybe. Yeah, um, sure. the received parts of it. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, so, and it's, it doesn't have to be limited to that. You can, you know, get your own materials, but the idea is um, you start thinking outside the box. Um, so in an actual building, we might have wallpaper or we might have carpets, but you might use things like foil to give a reflective surface, or you might use things like sponge because sponge contains holes and the holes will be good to absorb the sound. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. that makes sense. All right. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Great. So now the, it gets a bit more complicated if you want it to become more complicated. So um, not only will you have to think about the materials, you'll also have to think about the geometry. So when, when an engineer designs a, uh, designs a mosque, they don't just think about, oh, I'll just make it square shaped and I'll put a circular dome. They think about how that sound is going to be projected and you know how many windows should be put inside the building. Now, of course, we don't have windows, but you can create circular buildings, uh, cuboidal, triangular buildings, and you can even get creative with the dome. So you can make it, um, again, you can, make, you can make it pointy, you can make it spread out, you can make it tiny. Um, but the idea is once you make your building, we will have, um, I'll just have a sound source, which will be the, the makeshift adhan. And then you can get us a, um, a sound level meter app on your phone. So I don't know if you, if you guys have seen it. Um, so what would happen is when you make this building uh, and when we have the face-to-face -face event, we'll put a sound source and we'll project the sound and whoever is able to have the loudest adhan and we'll, we'll measure it using decibels, will win basically. Does that make sense? No, I've lost everyone. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, Not good. Sense. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, so this final uh, part is just saying we'll have a, I think there will be another session after this in a few weeks time. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll get to meet you all in person and just to, uh, just get to see if you're all on track. And if you, if you're, um, if you're certain with what you're, with what you're doing and how the project is going, basically. Um, but I think it's quite a nice project because you'll be able to design something and we'll present it in the form of a poster and a model, which I think is quite exciting. Okay, so um, I think that's the, that's, that's the part on, on the project. Now I'm just going to go through some of the acoustics and I'll try and explain this um, quite simply. But it's just so you guys have an idea of um, a few definitions and, and the things that you should be Googling or you should be looking out for when you do your research. Okay, the basics of sound. Um, so sound essentially travels in the form of uh, sound wave, right? And um, does anyone know, like, have, has anyone heard of terms called frequency or wavelength and amplitude? Yeah, yeah. I've heard of frequency, uh, yeah. Frequency. Yeah, frequency. yeah? yeah. apparently, Good. is there like a certain like frequency where like, 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 it makes it easier to hear from one ear. Um, yes, that's right. So there's there's a certain threshold of um, of of hearing. So there's a, a certain amount that you can hear, and then after that, there's a certain threshold of of pain. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely. So so for example, uh, the threshold of hearing. So the minimum amount that you can hear is is something called uh, twenty micropascals, which is the same as zero decibel. Um, no, sorry. So um, the human audible frequency range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's the range that we can hear. Okay. 
uh, when it gets to the kilohertz, that's when it's like really high frequencies. And um, the threshold of hearing is 20 micropascals or zero decibels. And the threshold of feeling is 20 pascals, which is equivalent to 120 decibels. So I guess when we do our project um, and we measure the amount of sound that is that comes out of this building that you all make, um, we can see what the decibel reading is. And if someone has something like 120 decibels, um, then maybe you'll be able to feel some sort of vibration. Um, now it might not be as accurate because obviously it'll be in an open space and there'll be lots of people around. So it might not be too stale, but this is what you should feel. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Good. Okay. I think right. how, how can you like measure um, like frequencies and that kind of stuff? Um, how can you measure it? So there's actually uh, equations and formulas that you can use to measure all of that. Haven't put it in this, but um, maybe I can put it in the chat box later if you want. Or you, you can find it out online as well. Yeah. It, there's a simple way and then there's a, there's a complicated way as well. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just show you some definitions. So you're just familiar as to what uh, some of these things mean. So frequency is the number of cycles of the wave per second. So did you see those, those waves on the, on the previous diagram? Yeah, did you see yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, so that is one yeah. frequency. And then after that, when it repeats, that's another one. And then after that, it's, it's another one, right? Um, so it's the oscillations, it's, it's the number of times that's, that, that wave is repeating. And then we'll have, uh, then we have wavelength, which is the distance between those, you know, those two peaks that you saw? Yeah, so um, that's a wavelength. And an amplitude is the intensity of the wave, so how high that peak is. And that determines how loud something is. So these three definitions are um, really important with wanting to understand uh, things about acoustics. Okay, does anyone know what a high frequency wave sounds like? Is it when the volume is a lot more higher? It's really yeah. high. Like a high, really high like a high pitch. Who said that? Uh, me. Can you say your name? Because I can't see Zara. you. Zara. 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 Oh, well done, Zara. So yeah, exactly. It's when it's a high pitch. That's the key word here. So it, it literally feels like a, like almost like a scream in your ear, right? And then, um, and then what about a low frequency wave then? Does anyone low know pitch. A low pitch, a low pitch. A low pitch, exactly. So it sounds like a, um, sorry? It's a deep sound. It's a, a deep, deep sound. Speaking. Yeah, exactly. It's a very deep sound. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you what, um, well, you're gonna be able to hear what a high frequency sound sounds like. And this is three kilohertz, so this is quite high now. Did y'all hear that? It sounds yes. like fire. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. And the idea is because it's high pitched, it will be able to, um, like lots of people will be able to hear it, right? But then we have a low frequency sound, which is something like 250 hertz. Do you see the difference? Yeah? yeah yeah okay so the idea is when we do this project um together when you have your sound source which is the the adhan um when it's projected in your building it will sound somewhere in between the low frequency and the high frequency um but then the decibel the, the sound level meter out will give a decibel reading okay okay so um i'm not going to go into uh, too much detail about this but sound is transmitted in different ways and there's two ways in which it's transmitted something called airborne sound and something called structure borne sound does anyone know what airborne sound is okay. sound that like, goes through the air exactly and what so what do you think structure borne sound is it's like does it go like through some kind of material yeah exactly two people said that at almost the same time are you sure you're not in the same house together no Okay, um, but yeah, you're right. So um, airborne sound is when it goes through the air and structure borne sound is when you have lots of different materials and um, it goes through the different structures. So um, who who has painted their house or one of their rooms before? Me. 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 I've helped out. Me. 
Oh, that's good. So yeah, we have you, brilliant. So when you when you paint your house, um, you take all the all the furniture out, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then when yeah. you walk in that room, what does it sound like? Echoey. Okay. Echoey. It it does because I there's did. no furniture in there, so all the sound is bouncing off everywhere. It doesn't know where to go, so it's just echoing, and there's lots of vibrations. But what happens when you start putting the sofa in there, and then the curtains, and then the carpet? What happens? Is it like a sound sound the sound is not the furniture? Exactly. The yeah. Exactly. So your sound, it well, your voice, it sounds different because lots of the lots of that sound that's being emitted has been absorbed in. So believe it or not, even curtains act as absorbers, and then the sofa and the carpet. So these are all important things to think about. Um, even when you start putting, you know, like cavity wall insulation, that starts uh, being part of the structure, and that's it's all it's all related to one another, structure bond and airborne sound. So this picture is just showing that you know when people start talking, you have this airborne sound, and then when you have doors and things like that, the sound. So someone in the next room will sound different to someone in the other room because the sound will travel through the structure of the door. So it'll sound different, but someone in two people in the same room, the sound will sound different. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's how sound travels. Um, so now we're going to talk about why is noise bad? Because the whole idea is, you know, why do people become acoustic engineers? Why do you guys think that I'm an acoustic engineer? To find more knowledge about uh, sound. Exactly, but what's the ultimate goal here? Like, is it like what to see what, what kind of sounds are bad for people? And stuff? If I know exactly, how because like, stop hurting you. Yeah, exactly, because because sound is actually quite um, so noise actually is harmful for your health. And um, so there's lots of acoustic engineers that are trying to make things better and um, more acoustically pleasing, and you know try to lower the disturbance and the annoyance. Okay, um, so why is noise bad? Does anyone know what? Can like, make too much noise, like, that like blow your eardrums or something. Yeah, that's true. If there's too much noise, so did you see in that video, there was all that music, and, like, imagine if, you know, someone is around all of that, it might start hurting your eardrums. What else? Makes it hard to concentrate. Exactly. Imagine you're doing you your schoolwork. Sorry? You can get a headache. Yeah, when, when I'm in a really loud um, area, I have to move away because it gives me headaches. So, exactly, there's all these things like, you know, there might be interference with like, if you're watching the TV and it's too loud or you're having a telephone conversation and someone's trying to talk, that's a disturbance. When you're trying to do your work and you want to work efficiently, that's a disturbance. And then someone else said stress and annoyance and it's true, you know? Uh, so this is, these are some of the reasons why noise is, is, is bad. So now um, let's think like an engineer. Materials can be used to control structure bond and airborne noise, right? So we're going to use something called the ABCD method. Um, and I want you to think about this when you when you design your mosque structure. I want you to start thinking about this, thinking about this ABCD method. So A stands for absorbers. OK, so um, you need to think about materials that you can use that will absorb the sound. Now, obviously, you're not making a real life building um, because you can't but um, you're making a miniature building and you need to look at materials that absorb. So what kinds of materials do you think can absorb sound? Um, oh. A window. A window? Yeah, uh, yeah it depends. A sponge. Uh, sorry? Like sponge, like a sponge. big sponge. Yeah, yeah, yeah sponge, definitely Petals. sponge. What else? Foil. Foil, uh, foil. Uh, Half and half, but yeah, on the right Met lines. Telephone. Metal. Acoustic foam. Styrofoam. Acoustic foam. Wow, someone's been doing some reading. Yeah, so there's actually mm. special foam called acoustic foam as well. Um, and it's just got different properties. Like Styrofoam. Styrofoam, yeah. So what do all these things have in common? So people said styrofoam, acoustic foam, um, someone said sponge. What what do they have in common? The absorbers. But what makes them absorbers? Why are they absorbers? What's so yeah. special about them? Is it because they have like maybe yeah. some air in them? Yeah, pockets. These pockets of air or these holes, they, um, you know, they're able to, if, if ever there's a loud noise, it's able to absorb that sound and hold it in that pocket. 
Yeah, so exactly, it's these pockets of air that helps. The next one is B, barriers. So when we have, um, so this prevents sound from being transmitted. So things like, you know, like the door or metal cladding, you know, if you have a really heavy door, that's gonna help with um, controlling this, the sound, the, the level of noise, right? Um, so maybe when you create your building, you need to think about adding some heavy material in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You can get creative. Windows. Yeah, maybe maybe you can make some see-through uh, windows using cellophane. I don't know, you can be creative. Maybe you can add layers to it uh, and make like a, a, a double glazing with like double cellophane. I don't know. Um, but you can get really creative with this um, and it's all down to you. But this, these are just some, of, some ideas to help you start thinking outside the box. And then there's something else called coupling, but I'm not going to go into too much detail with this because this is more related to pipes. Um, and it's to do with spring. So we're gonna, we're gonna skip this part, but it's something just to know for the future. And then there's something called dampers, which control resonance. Does anyone know what resonance is? Is it like sound rebounding or something? <laughs> so say when you like bounce wow. something. You guys are so clever, is Michelle. It like the yeah. Quality? Yeah, so, well, it's, it's more like the, um, the rebound of the sound and how it bounces back and forth. That's essentially what resonance is. So someone earlier said something to do with the pulse. I can't remember who it was. Um, someone said something to do with the ripples um, earlier, and that's basically what resonance is. So because of the vibrations of certain, when you, when you throw a stone in the water, um, it obviously creates that movement, and that movement, uh, it moves the particles in the air, and that creates vibrations. So because of those vibrations, you see the ripples in the water, and that's essentially resonance. But the difference is, it's the sound in the water, so it's different, but it's kind of similar. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we spoke about absorbers. Um, so lots of people said foam, um, like acoustic foam. Uh, I don't know if anyone has been inside one of these rooms. Um, probably not. So this is something called an anechoic chamber. So we have these at university and people say that it's quite scary to go in one of them because you can hear your own heartbeat. Does anyone know why? Yeah, because it's trapped in there and they can't yeah, get out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sometimes also you can't, they make it so there's no light at all, is it? So yeah, so you can't it, see anything. Exactly. So it's actually a really dark room. There's no windows and there's all these foams and they're, they're cone shaped as well. So um, the shape of those foams also helps with the way the sound is absorbed. Um, and then because there's no sound at all, when people go inside it, they get quite scared because they can hear the sound of their heartbeat. Um, so I've been in, inside one of those rooms and I can't last more than like 30 seconds. It's, it's really creepy. Um, but I hope you guys get to go one day, maybe. Maybe you can come to Sheffield, I don't know. I've um, been in one before. Never been in one. There's one in Salford and there's one in Sheffield. So in my university, there is one there. Um, but it's quite cool. Um, so that's absorbers. So everyone um, mentioned, you know, using, so using layers and thinking about uh, things like foam is a really good idea. So when we talk about barriers, we're talking about how stiff something is and how heavy something is. So can anyone name me any stiff materials? Iron. Steel. Iron. Steel. Yeah, Steel. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brilliant. Cardboard. Eh? Yeah, cardboard. If you, maybe, what about? What's glass? Glass. Yeah, glass is quite stiff. Um, someone said Brick. cardboard, so you can have corrugated Brick. cardboard. Bricks. Yeah, exactly. So they're quite stiff materials. So if you think about it, if you have something that's quite bendy, um, when you have a sound wave that goes through it, because it's quite bendy, it'll, it'll be able to move through that. But if you have something that's really stiff, once the sound wave goes through, the, through it, it won't be able to penetrate as easily. So that's why a stiff material is quite good um, to control the sound. OK, so you can see here in this picture, you've got a sound coming in and it's a really loud sound at 100 decibels. But then once it goes out the other end, because that looks like brick or steel, the sound is less, it's 55 decibels. So that's just an example of how stiff and heavy materials can work. And then I mentioned coupling. So coupling is um, something else and it's to do with springs. Um, and springs help with the way low frequency and high frequency transmission occurs, but it's, it's more to do with pipe work. So we won't focus on that, but the most important thing here is looking at absorbing material, looking at heavy, stiff materials, and focusing on resonance. 
So what happens when you flick a glass? Does anyone know? Does it like that sound like kind of bounce in from inside? Exactly. You know what? Yeah, so so that's what it is. It bounces. So um when you flick a, a glass, it starts to the sound starts to bounce and that's resonance. So someone said glass, maybe, maybe not so much glass or plastic, because when you have when we have the sound source, um it might start bouncing everywhere and then your your reading might be different. But then again, if you think about the Adhan, right? When when the um when we have the call to prayer, there's probably uh, resonance materials that allows it to be projected. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 So like kind of like aim the sound somewhere. Yeah. So maybe when you create your building, you need to put a resonance material um quite close to it so that when the sound is projected, it hits this resonance material and is able to bounce back. Whereas if you put the resonance material far away. Then the sound by the time the sound is projected it'll be a quiet sound when it reaches the resonance material so so you can start thinking about how close to the sound source will you put your materials how far away will you put it how heavy will you make it how flexible how stiff how absorbing all those things are really important um, when we're trying to control the sound so when we start to combine a b c d we get this so this is what makes an acoustically pleasing uh, building so you have the absorbing material, you have like something that works in isolation. So this is like your, um, your this is where your uh, coupling comes into place. This is your sound source and you have like a barrier, which is your enclosed space. Um, and then you might want to stop the resonance or actually enhance the resonance. So all these things will help with uh, creating your building that is acoustically pleasing. Okay. So I already mentioned this, but just to give you an idea, you could create different shapes for your um, for your mosque, right? So think about the floor plan. Is it going to be rectangular? Is it going to be like an octagon? Because if you have an octagon, then you have all these corners. And when you project the sound, it'll project in in eight ways, I guess, rather than four ways. OK, so there's lots of things to think about when you create your dome. Is it going to be like a like the traditional dome or is it going to be pointy? If it was pointy, then I guess the, the sound will project differently. Yeah. Has that got you guys thinking about some ideas? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know what I want. I want A and C put together. A and C put together. Maybe you could put a spring in it, see what happens, right? Um, so the end goal, I mean, this is just a jigsaw that I found off the internet, but the idea is you would create something out of cardboard and we'd have a sound source somewhere and we'd project that sound and we'd measure it using the, a sound level meter app. And that's the idea for the project. Do you guys like it? Are you are you excited to try it? Yeah. Yeah, very. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. So um, I think that leaves me with like five or six minutes to spare for questions. Are there any questions? I'll stop sharing my screen. I can see you all. Does anyone have any questions about the project? Something you're unsure about? Yeah, I have one. Okay, so maybe okay. Three participants raise their hands. I feel so old. Um, Vice, maybe you could coordinate this and ask. Yeah, um, uh, I'll just do ones there. Yeah, yeah. Um, ladies first. We start with Amira. When is it due? When is it due? Um, so. I think Athar Baisab is probably the best person to answer that. The the face to face session is mid August. Yeah, so I mean, um, you can start thinking of the ideas now. But I mean, um, as soon as we've had all the online sessions, um, on, on, online um, learning sessions, so um, uh, the first week of August, but we're going to try to meet in person, and that's when we'll when we'll actually try to create these models. And Hasina will join us for some of these sessions uh, to help us, you know, to create something as well. Then, so you can, for now, you can. Start thinking of what you want to do, but first week of August, we'll start doing these things, inshallah. Perfect. Yahya, do you want to ask your question? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so my question is, um, when was, you know, humans, when we speak, is that just like different like sound waves and frequencies just, you know, moving around? Yeah, so everyone has a different uh, voice, right? Like a, a man would sound different to a woman. 
Um, so obviously a man's voice would sound louder or it would have a, a lower frequency, which is a lot deeper, whereas a woman's voice would be quite high pitched. So yeah, I guess um, because we're all made differently and that's the beauty about sounds and Islam because we're, we all have different bodies. We're, we're, we're all made differently. And when the sound is projected, it sounds different. The rooms that we're in is different. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all different. Yeah. So I've, I thought that like every single tiny sound that was made, it was like different frequencies and everything. Cause I mean, like I thought that like, for example, when I, when I say something, Oh, you know what, forget it. I just forgot. It's okay. Well, uh, if you want me to put in here, um, so in your throat, like around, like, say the middle, you can, every time you speak, put your hand in the middle of your throat. Can you feel a vibration there? Speak now. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a voice box in the middle of that, and then inside there, you have vocal cords, which isn't the full story of the sound, but that, because everyone is built differently, you know, we all look different, we all... You know, we're built differently, we're all different sizes, different heights, whatever. It's the same with your voice box. It's all different. The makeup of your voice box, the actual shape of it is different. And your vocal cords are their built and how they vibrate, they're different. And obviously, because your voice box is different, uh, your sound is different. And part of how you speak and how your, like, how your voice comes out is how your throat is shaped, how your mouth is shaped, and actually how your skull is shaped as well. Because, you know, as the senior said, like, sounds are vibrations and you know to get out your mouth they have to pass through your throat your skull your face all of that and because all of that is obviously built different because we're all different people they're going to sound different you get what i mean yeah Good. yeah Thank exactly you. um just on that note tyler just asked me a question how come some people can change their voices um well, you can try it now yourself. You can you can sound different. <laughs> Go on, do you want? You can sound. You can sound. You can have a high pitched voice. You can you can have a low pitched voice because, um, you know you can. It's how you change it. So, when you're speaking, you you can speak very loudly, and then that will be projected differently. You can speak in a, in a quiet way, and then it'll come out quietly. It's just you can change it yourself, can't you? Perfect. Yeah. Um, Basil and Salah. Uh, I was just asking, what would be like the strongest material to like keep the sound like inside the mosque? Uh, the strongest material. Um, I don't know if it's the strongest, but I definitely think it would um help keep the sound. So something like steel, because. Steel is, and if you have, you have to think about, it's not only just the material, you have to think about the layers, how heavy it is, um, how stiff it is. So if you can find uh, the perfect material that is stiff, heavy, has enough layers, has enough holes, po well, pockets of air, then I don't know, maybe it could be the future, right? Maybe you could be the next future scientist. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, Sahil, do you want to ask your question? My question is, did you always like science from when you were younger? Yes, I always liked science. I love science. Um, I never thought I'd get into acoustics, but I, I really enjoy what I do. And I always like asking questions. And I feel like it's, I'm always learning, which is why I really like it. There's no end to it. And my second question is, what inspired you to go into uh, acoustics? <laughs> um, what inspired me? So... Um, I really liked polymers and because uh, of the, ma the material that I work with is a silica aerogel, so it's a type of polymer. Um, and I really liked the fact that I could work in a lab um, and create a, a small design and then I could engineer it to go for bigger applications. And acoustics was just one of those applications. Um, it wasn't like, oh, t you know, I really want to get into acoustics. It was more like, I'm really interested in science and I really like polymers. And I'm just going to do it because I enjoy it. And then afterwards, all the applications came. So I think a lot of people, they stress about, I want to get into this because it will get me to this. I think you should focus on what do you enjoy and just go with it. And then you'll find that there are lots of applications to it. You'll find that, oh, it's used in here and it's used in there. And naturally, you'll fall in love with it. Okay. Thank you. Um, we'll have...
Um, every time I see Rania and Sumaya, I just picture Waffle Delight. I don't know why. I just see look at your picture and I just, you keep reminding me of Waffle Delight. Yeah, um, it's Cube 66. Right, um, so, sorry, a bit a tangent. Sayed Sabir, do you want to ask you a question? If you wanted to be an architect, would you have to learn about acoustics? acoustics. Yes, there's actually a department where um, it's an it's like a subsection of architecture where you have to learn about acoustics. But um, I guess I guess even if you didn't know about acoustics, you would work with acoustic engineers, so it helps to know a little bit about it. Jed, do you ask your question? Listen, you got earthquake in the room. <laughs> um. So uh, I've got two questions, actually. The first one is, um, you know, I've seen doctors that are specialized to do with the ear. What are they called? Um, I actually don't know. I just call them an ear doctor, but I'm sure there's a specific name for them. Uh, maybe you could find out and you could, you could let Faisal know and, and then he can tell me. Uh, Side project for you, Jahid. <laughs> now I've got two. No, second question is to do with my other field, I've been doing some field research on scientists. First question is, do you wear glasses? Um, when I'm dealing with uh, harmful chemicals, yes. They generally do you wear glasses though, apart from- Oh, um, I wear contact lenses. Most cameras can't go. Proven, proven, proven. <laughs> Sorry. I think, um, I, think um, I think, um I think you have to share the, the, the joke with Hasina. I'm sure I've seen it was part of the joke when we had it last time. No, basically, you need a reminder. That's the, the engineer that, um, because the engineer I forgot his name. What was his name again? Uh, Kevin. 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 He had glasses on. I loved Kevin so much. He had glasses on. So they asked him a question Do clever people wear glasses? I think Kevin's answer was something like, um, because we, they read um, books so much, their eyesight have been affected. And that's why they wear glasses. Um, okay. That, 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 that would mean. Um, Rani is clever, uh, more intelligent than Sumaya. Um, me and Baisab are co completely clueless. Um, but yeah, no, completely. Do you, you continue your investigation, uh, uh Jahid? But <laughs> I don't think it'll go far, right? So, here we'll ask your last question, and then uh, I think people are getting Friday night takeaway. Go on. No, it wasn't a question, I was just wanted to say to Oh, I mean, uh, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this and I, I hope you guys enjoyed it and, and didn't find it too boring. No, no, alhamdulillah. <laughs> well, while while, while I was, uh, we were listening, I just, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, I'm going up and down because I have nephews over, um, but that we're so lucky to have our hearing. Imagine we'd have a hearing, the deaf brothers and sisters in the community we would be able to hear those high pitch sounds, the low pitch sounds. And when you pray with deaf people, you think, subhanAllah, I pray in, uh, sometimes in the house center and the deaf brothers go there. And side to side, I'm, I'm listening to some beautiful recitation. I'm thinking this person next to me can't read, listen. Mm -hmm. um, so make God that they have the best hearing in the hereafter. And the second point, uh, as Sina mentioned, that um, she's never been to the masjid. So I think it could be a good project. This could be our, uh, you guys in the next generation, inshallah, you will allow, liberate Jalali and Masjid to allow. When it comes to that aspect, uh, I will be a feminist. But, um, by some <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Inshallah, that would be no. really good. I look forward to that. Yeah, no, that was, um, it, 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 I mean, it really affected me as well when, when you mentioned how, you know, where you're showing the picture and how you said, you know, you haven't had the opportunity to go to the mosque as yet. Um, and as, as Hafiz Dion said, Inshallah, you know, the young people that we have for taking this project, you know, it's, it's going to be, that's going to be one of your challenges in the future as a group. How can you accommodate both male and female? Within the, within, within the Muslim environment, the Muslim environment, inshallah. Um, but this is, um, it wasn't boring. Um, the project, I, I think it's, it's going to be a very good project. So basically, um, in another, after another couple of weeks, we will start designing our own mosque. There'll be more materials provided to you. Uh, some of the things that you, uh, Hasina mentioned and some of you mentioned as well, um, forms and foils and maybe even stones and bricks we can provide you with as well. And um, so inshallah, um, uh, all of you will be designing mosques and then um, at the final event you're going to be showcasing them off and um, the senior will also be conducting the sound experiments on the day as well. So uh, I, I think it's going to be exciting and um, it's going to be fun as well. Um, and on that note, I've seen a lot for making the time for us. Sorry, the one. 
And I'll say, I can't wait to see these masks and visit them. Must be as creative as possible, make a name for these messages. Um, be as creative as possible. Uh, yeah. Like Mariam said to me, name. Yeah, that. I mean, um, no, it, it'd be wonderful to create this mosque and then maybe give it the, you know, the, the, the golden age uh, scientists, uh, if you can name it after them. I mean, yesterday, um, Gerald picked up on um, Al Tulsi uh, Buruni. Um, he, he's, he's, he, he, she, well, she mentioned Al Haytham. So as we go along, um, if we learn about the Muslim, the name of the Muslim scientists, we can give them, we can give the mosque the Muslim scientists names as well. Might be something interesting as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, on that note, um, Hasina, Jazakumullah for making the time Thank for you us. Myself. Inshallah, we'll Thank catch you. up again soon, and we'll, uh, yeah. hopefully we, we can arrange an in-person session as well. Definitely. And um, Jazakumullah to everyone, and we still have to decide what time we're going to do our session tomorrow. We'll carry that, we'll carry that conversation on in the group, Inshallah. And um, yeah, so. Jai, does the a comment on. The only high one is you, Jahid, in the, uh, with the questions you're coming out with. And on that note, uh, I'm off. Assalamu alaikum. See you guys tomorrow, I believe. Alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you.